how bad do these chassis get before you actually throw them out? Looks like that they're kind of constantly cutting tubes off and reweld them and kind of saving these chassis. Yeah, you can do a lot um, before you have to throw one away. Mm -hmm. Obviously, front clip and rear clip is pretty easy to change out. Mm -hmm. When you get to bending up the center section pretty bad, then you start to throw them away. They all have to be such tight tolerances yeah. that even sometimes you'll race one and try to take it back and it won't fit the tolerances anymore. So you just gotta, you gotta be really careful on that as well. What's up everybody, this is Chris Forsberg and on this episode of Garage Tours, we head down to Mooresville, Nass Carolina to the 66,000 square foot facility that houses professional race team and the management company for NASCAR's arguably most popular driver, Dale Earnhardt Jr. I'm here at Junior Motorsports with the driver of the number 88 Advanced Autoport Chevy Camaro, Alex Bowman. And this is an awesome facility. We've been to a couple NASCAR shops before, but this one's a little bit different. Why don't you tell us about it? Yeah, so we, uh, we run the Xfinity Series. It's, um, it's the second tier down from the Cup Series. Obviously, Hendrick Motorsports is a, is a Cup team. Our, our boss drives for them, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Yep. Probably the best boss in the garage to have. You, uh, you can learn a lot from him. But um, we're affiliated with HMS. We get a lot of our parts and pieces from them, and uh, I'll show you that later. Now, our visit to Hendrick Motorsports was pretty awesome. We had the crew chief's perspective, but what I really wanted to see is the driver's perspective. So why don't you take us around and show us what it takes to get through the ranks of NASCAR. Yeah, let's get to it. So I guess it's pretty safe to say that Junior Motorsports is really busy with all these different teams. Yeah, so we've got Elliot Sadler in the one car, Justin Allgaier in the seven car, a uh, bunch of us going through the 88 car between me, Kevin Harvick, Casey K, and Dale Jr. Uh, Cole Custer runs a double zero truck and the, the five Xfinity car part time. Um, so yeah, there's a bunch of us. Every team takes two cars to the racetrack between a primary and a backup. So a lot of race cars going through yeah. here and uh, I'll show you guys the, the car on the setup plate for this week. Perfect. I'm feeling pretty balanced, <laughs> pretty level. <laughs> yeah, so this is, we're on a surface plate. Um, Perfectly level, yeah. like 100% laser, perfectly level. It's where uh, we get our, our cars completely ready. This is actually the car I'm gonna be racing this weekend. Awesome. Yeah, we're ready to go. So basically we'll run really through four or five setups. Um, so when we're at the racetrack, we can make spring changes in two or three minutes. Now is that like your biggest change you say, is the springs? Um, I wouldn't say it's our biggest change. Mm -hmm. uh, we can do a lot with, uh, with just, like towing the rear end housing with mm -hmm. the truck arms. Um, I mean, truck arm changes are typically huge. Yeah. Um, we can do a lot with wedge, with nose weight, um, kind of all over the place. We'll have complete different packages. We're always on, on bump stops trying to limit our travel and get the splitter as close to the ground as we can. Got it. So we can put the car in different attitudes and limit travel in different ways, and, and that's always a big change as well. Got it. So you can make all those changes during practice, but during the race you said you can't do some of those changes? Yeah, so in the race, we're really limited. Um, we have the two rear jack bolts mm -hmm. and the rear track bar that you can get to through the rear window on a pit stop. Mm -hmm. um, inside the car, we've got a bunch of different fans that I can, can use to kind of change what the car is doing. Um, you can change tire pressure, and then if you're really bad, you can open the hood and make a, a, a front height change okay. or, or put packer in it, pull packer out of it. So there's a lot you can do. You're kind of scramble at that point though. You lose so much track position on a pit stop doing that stuff. So we try to be as close as we can, for sure. So why don't you take us for a little walk around the shop and show us how you come up with all these different setups. Yeah, let's go to the suspension room. We got a lot of different arms. You got some axles, truck arms. Why don't you uh, take us through on what you actually put into the car and how it makes a difference for the driver? Yeah, so all our suspension stuff gets built here. Mm -hmm. um, we do a lot with different geometry stuff. And, and as a driver at the racetrack, we'll go through completely different geometry changes. Like mm -hmm. just, if you're off, you're really like overhaul front end, change lowers, spindles, <laughs> uppers, everything. And it, it's a big difference. You know, mm -hmm. you make little geometry changes and, even if it doesn't change much, it completely changes how the race car drives. Um, and gotcha. How it loads, get into a corner, and, and you can feel that a ton. Well, like I saw on the chassis, you got a couple different pickup points. So you can change the actual pickup on the control arms, but then are the control arms different from each other? Do you have some that are longer, different caster? Yeah, so we have, um, I mean, different angles, different lengths, mm -hmm. and then on the chassis, everything's slugged, so you can move them to different pickup points. Um, there's a ton of adjustability built into these cars. Mm -hmm just takes time to change them. Now you say there'll be um, up to like 10 different drivers in the 88 car this year. Do they have different packages, more so for the track or for the driver? 
I'd say some of it's for the driver. Mm -hmm. A lot of it's for the track, though. I mean, everywhere we go from flat tracks like Loudoun, New Hampshire, to Dover, where it's like a roller coaster and all kinds of banking. So. Um, you know, you have to be so vastly different because the car takes such different loads. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you took your loud and set up to Dover, your car just hit the ground everywhere. So, yeah, yeah. Um, there, but there's, um, there's so huge differences. So you have like, say, you have a steep track and like a track that you've run at, and a track that obviously uh, you know Dale Jr. has run the same car, the same track. Would you have a different setup, or would they kind of just be like, "Here's your setup, man. Just go for it. This is what works for him." Typically, um, whoever's had more success there, you will unload with that setup. Yeah. But the racetracks are always so different. Anytime you show up, you're gonna be tweaking it. Uh, I mean, even guys, if you won, dominated the last race there, they still show up the next week, try, like tweaking it the whole practice. So um, there's, there's definitely some big differences there. So all our bodies are completely hand built. Awesome. Um, so I'm gonna take you here into the fab shop and show you where it all goes down. Cool. Nope, nope. nope. No? No cameras? No cameras. Oh man. Or not. I mean, looks looks cool from here. Yeah. You know. yeah sorry you NASCARs. guys can't see it. Yeah, there's some NASCARs back there. <laughs> so uh, what I couldn't show you over in the fab room <laughs> is uh, is basically what's gonna happen to this car. Mm -hmm. So every car starts out as uh, just tubing and flat sheet metal. Yep. Um, we get our chassis from Hendrick Motorsports, but we hang our bodies here. So this car is about to get completely rebodied. It's a road course car that got wrecked somewhere that. We're gonna put a new body on it. It'll be a work of art when it's done. How bad do these chassis get before you actually throw them out? Looks like that they're kind of constantly cutting tubes off and rewelding them and kind of saving these chassis. Yeah, you can do a lot um, before you have to throw one away. Mm -hmm. Obviously, front clip and rear clip's pretty easy to change out. Mm -hmm. When you get to bending up the center section pretty bad, then you start to throw them away. So when the main rails get bent up, when the when you get like a big side impact that'll kill the center section, you start throwing them away. Gotcha. But they're basically getting rebodied almost every race. Yeah, I mean, even when you don't wreck one, typically from pit stops and just race wear and tear, you're gonna tear the sides off of it at least and typically do like a door tops down. So it won't need a roof, mm -hmm. but it'll need a new side from getting together with somebody or whatever. So they're, um, they all have to be such tight tolerances yeah. that even sometimes you'll race one and try to take it back and it won't fit the tolerances anymore. Well, it's clear you have a couple sets of calipers for all these different cars. <laughs> yeah, so we run um, like vastly different sizes of brake calipers depending on where we go. Short tracks, we'll have some big brakes. Road courses, we'll get huge with it. Um, intermediate stuff, we run some pretty big brakes, but, but not the biggest because you want to be lightweight. In super speedways, you run really small brakes. Try to be really? the least friction you can. And, <laughs> And uh, you know who needs to slow down when somebody I was crashes? Say, it's funny company. when you think about it that way. Yeah. Like, oh, the 200 mile an hour tracks with the smallest brakes. Yeah, there. exactly. They're the lightest. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, we run way different stuff depending on where we go. Obviously, tiny rear calipers at some places. Some places they're big. Um, kind of all over the place with it. So this carbon fiber dash is pretty slick looking and uh, as a driver you obviously have to be watching not only the racetrack but everything that's going on here. Yeah, so as a driver, I mean, it, it's my responsibility to watch the gauges. You know, we run as much tape on the front end as we can to make downforce. Mm -hmm. With that, you trade water temperature. So you're always keeping an eye on your gauges, try not to run it too hot. Mm -hmm. You got your switches for, for your bead blowers, your, your tire fans and stuff. And then we're also one of the only series that doesn't have a pit road speed limiter. So. We have all that by RPM. Um, you try to maximize your speed on pit road without speeding, because then it's a penalty. Yeah. So um, that's kind of tough, because you don't have a speedometer. You just do it by RPM in different gears. Yeah, that's funny when you think about it. You know, This is one of the only series that doesn't really have constant communication other than radio with the pit. So the driver has a lot of responsibilities you know, to monitor the temperatures and you know, make sure you're not just overheating the engine and sending her home. They don't have any telemetry. So I, I'm telling them everything through the radio. They don't have like anything to see how much fuel's in it or anything, and, and neither do I. We do all that by like weight during pit stops. So wow. it's um, it's a lot of a lot of communication to make it work, but uh, it, it's pretty cool. Now you mentioned that you also control the tire fans. So is that what these uh, four individual switches are right here? Yeah. So right here we have um, left front, right front, left mm -hmm. rear, right rear. Your fronts have a bead blower and a tire fan. Okay. Uh, your rears are typically just tire fans. Mm -hmm. That comes down to, I mean, we're, we have such high loads, we create so much heat. Yeah. If you didn't have fans, you'd blow tires all the time pretty much. So um, you have fans 
to control handling and just to, as a safety factor, really. You can do a lot with, like if you're really loose, you can turn your front fans off, let your front pressures build up yep. and tighten the car up a lot. So you can be smart with it to a point. Sometimes you'll turn your front fans off, they'll build up too much and you'll get way too tight or you'll blow a tire, so. And there's obviously no monitor on the temperature of these tires, so it's all by feel. Yeah, there's absolutely no monitor. There's no tire pressure monitors, oh. there's nothing. So it is 100% by feel, 100% the driver's responsibility. This is our loading bay. Mm -hmm. um, we've got our pick carts, everything that we're gonna take to the racetrack that we'll need uh, throughout the weekend. We'll yeah. load our primary, our Definitely backup. Need the grill. Yep, always, always, I mean, <laughs> hungry guys gotta eat, right? That's right. Um, yeah, so this is, uh, this is the end of it. Thanks for coming by. Yeah, man, well, thanks for giving me a little perspective from the driver's point of view on what it takes to get a NASCAR team up and ready for racing. You know, there's obviously a lot into it. There's a lot of responsibilities on your end, and, um, you know, it's cool to kind of see some of the back ends. We didn't get to see everything that goes into building a race car, but, you know, that's how it goes in big-time auto racing, right? Yep, exactly. You stole my line. <laughs> it was great to get a tour of the facility from a driver's point of view. Alex Bowman took us through all the steps that it takes to prepare a car for a NASCAR weekend. And he also showed us all the ins and outs of the responsibilities that a NASCAR driver has during a race. We'll see you next time on Garage Tours.